So we're a family of six and we've had the opportunity to travel all over the United States and now several places around the world. And we wanna give you five tips to get you started on how you can travel with children. So we've always enjoyed traveling. Even before we had kids, we would travel around the country. We went international a few times and Megan and I really didn't want that to stop when we had kids. So our kids are now 11, 10, six and one. And we really wanted to take them along with us. We have people tell us all the time that they can't travel because they have young kids or they'll travel later when their kids are older, when it's more convenient, when there's better scenarios in life and there's really no better time to, to do it than now. We want to encourage you that it can be done. You can travel with your kids no matter the age. Uh, we've traveled with as young as a three month old up to now an 11 year old and we've they've all been um, Gray, our oldest, has been to 49 states. Kiri and, and Phoenix have been to, I think, 46 so far. Uh, our youngest, Cruz, has only been to a few because he's only a year old. Uh, but they've all been to multiple countries. Um, I think 14 or 15 in different ways we've traveled as a whole family. And we've also done some international trips where it's one of us or both of us going with one or two kids where the whole family's not traveling with us. Traveling gives the kids insight into other people, cultures, and languages, and really gives them a global perspective on life. So we want to give you five ideas of things that you can do to start living out this dream of traveling with your family. So the first tip would be to go. That seems so simple, but there's never a perfect time. There's never the perfect money. There's never the perfect schedule. Kids always have stuff. Families always have stuff. There's always something in the horizon, um, but you have to start somewhere. Eight or 10 years ago, we didn't imagine that us traveling would be such a big part of our life. We always enjoyed traveling, but we didn't know how often we would be able to do it now, especially with four kids in tow. So we have learned a lot through those years of how to do it, what to do, and what that looks like. We have people say all the time, I'll go when my kids are older, or I wish I could go, but my kids are too young. And so we just really wanna encourage people that there's no better time than now. There's no better time to start than where you are. There's no better time than whatever season you're in to go ahead and get your feet under you and start to travel. So the best thing to do is just plan a trip, which then leads into the second thing, which is to start small. You don't have to bite off a, a multi-week international trip on your first adventure. You can, but start small. Um, one of the things we did to start with was we um, bought a camper. So we bought a small little camper. We had two kids at the time. We bought a small little camper. We took a couple of small trips just in the state and we stayed a few nights in the camper and spent a week in it uh, on the next trip just uh, a few hours away. And then actually on the way home from that trip, this was in 2017, we actually bought another camper. We sold that one, bought another one. Um, and that's the one we have now. It's a 1980 Airstream. And so we have taken it, um, I think to 47 states now. So you don't have to jump off the deep end and go with a long international trip. Road trips are a great cost effective way to get into traveling. They kind of get your feet under you. They give you some confidence in getting out of the house, getting out of your normal routine. If you can manage the time and figure out a way to do a road trip, it's a great way to get started traveling with your family without biting off the huge chunk of money that it would take to fly somewhere and do the same thing. The more you go, the more confidence, like you said, you get. You know, the first time we went to the camper, we didn't know what we were doing, the kids didn't know what we were doing, but the more we went, the easier the takedown, the setup, the pulling became. I feel like the same thing happened the first time we traveled internationally with the kids. There were so many questions in the airport, what's this, what's that, you know, and that can be a headache, but now that they've done it so many times, they're pros. We can follow them through an airport because they know what comes, you know, their security, then what comes next. and. They've had the questions answered, they've seen it, they've done it. And so now your confidence builds. So I feel like if you start small and work your way up, then your confidence in all those different steps builds for you and for the kids. Yeah, so if you haven't taken any trips, if, you, if you've stayed at home with your kids, our first road trip with our um, six-year-old now, his first road trip was a 31-day trip from Alabama to California and then across back across the U.S. Uh, in our camper, in our 1980 Airstream. And um, he was three months old. 
start with something. You don't have to do that 31 day trip first, but go, go plan a weekend trip away somewhere. Uh, if you don't have a camper, if you're interested in campers, look at some camper options. There are many inexpensive camper options that you can get. It's great. Campers are wonderful because you have all your stuff with you. You're not having to unpack and pack in a hotel room. Our kids had never really even stayed in a hotel room until a few years ago because we'd always stayed in the camper. Um, there's many options that you can that you can do, um, but go plan a trip somewhere local. Go stay away for a few days, and then somewhere you've never been, and then. Once you do that, start looking at some other options and time frames that you can go maybe fly somewhere in the U.S. or fly somewhere, maybe Canada or Mexico, somewhere close, get your feet wet with flying, and then you could go overseas somewhere uh, to maybe Europe or Australia or Asia or something like that, bigger, whatever you have in mind. Just kind of set your goals big, but start small. This is weird. Where are you? Egypt. Look over to the side of there. There's the pyramids. I can see it through the phone. <laughs> <laughs> Is this your first time on a camel? Yes, that's what's weird. Our third piece of advice would be not to just focus on like the kid friendly or the kid avenues. Yeah, the kid focused destinations. Um, not any, that any of those are bad, but when you find a just a kid location, oftentimes it's just the kids enjoying it and it's a chore for the parents. So try to find family friendly options but something that the whole family will enjoy we, we've actually never really been to many kid locations we've never been to disney we've never been to universal we've never been on a cruise which some of that stuff i'm not saying all that stuff is bad i mean i would love to do several of those things yeah but that. but not saying those things are bad but you don't always have to go to the kid friendly locations you don't have to go to just the children's museums or the parks or the playgrounds it's not a, a trip full of all that stuff all those things can be incorporated to your trip, but try to incorporate things that everybody's going to enjoy. So our family loves national parks, and this is something where there are beautiful sights to see and hikes to do, but they have the Junior Ranger program. There's usually water to get into, you know, different things like that. And the more they do it, then the more excited they'll be to do those things. We've had several people say, I wish my kids would hike that far, or they would go do this or do that, but it's not because they're exceptional kids. I mean, they are. We love them. But it's because that's that's what they know. That's all they've ever done is go to a national park and hike. And so they get excited about it because that's what they know to get excited about. So with the budget conscious thought plan, we travel very inexpensively, typically anywhere we go. Um, one thing we don't do a lot of is like going to the go-kart track or going to the theme park or going to the paid uh, attractions in the city, name that city, um, the Children's Museum, the uh, whatever boat ride that you can do, the all the things that are very tourist traps. They're, they're loaded with people. Um, they are usually really expensive. And when you start taking four kids with us, stuff gets really expensive. Stuff may not be that expensive if you're taking one person or even a couple, but when you start taking the whole family, stuff gets expensive. So there's a lot of things that we have to really be choosy on what we decide to do. Find family activities that you can do as a, as a family. If you've got little bitty babies and things like that, figure out things that you can take them with you. Uh, get a pack, get, your, get a baby carrier and carry the baby with you. Um, if you've got if you're going to a new city or something like that, like let them experience that place with you. I would say as part of number three um, is to pick the destination together if you can. It's neat to see where their minds go, where they want to begin to explore after they've explored some following you. And then they are excited to go see that place and do things that aren't necessarily the kid focused things that you would think of, but because they've got input and excitement into the trip, then they're excited to go and do the same things that you do. Yeah, give them some ideas. So like you could offer three different things, but then we'll kind of say, hey, do you want to go to this waterfall? Do you want to go to this um, city park? Or do you want to go to this thing? We'll kind of give them some options. They feel involved in the process and it helps them kind of have buy-in and excitement about the places that we're going, not just following the parents wherever we go we don't have any any say so and i feel like that leads in to number four 
which would be the, the hike, getting excited about it. Once you've picked your destination, go ahead and be learning together as a family about that spot. If you are going to see a great monument, let's learn about the monument. Let's look at pictures of the monument. Hey, was a movie made about that? And then the more excited they get before they go, the better the trip's going to be when you get there because they dreamed about it. You know, that's how it works. When we dream about something, that's what we're so excited to see and to do. And so as you educate the kids or yourselves um, before you go, that builds that excitement. So I would encourage to, to hype it up, build it up. We would love it if you would subscribe to this channel and like this video. And then down in the comments below, let us know if there's anything that you have questions about that maybe we can help out with some of our experience and help you get started traveling with your family. Number five would be that flexibility is key. And that is in so many different ways. So that can be because your plans got busted because of weather or a destination was a letdown that you thought was gonna be awesome and it was just kind of blah. But in the flexibility, leading with your attitude really makes, I feel like the biggest difference. Because if you're let down, well then the kids are, you know, let down. If you're not loving it, they're probably not loving it either. And so just being mindful that if things change, it's okay. There are things that you have to take into consideration that you didn't know you were going to have to before you start. And also the way that you lead the kids matters. So if there's food served to you in another country that does not look great, um, you know, it's, sometimes it's a fake it till you make it situation because we don't want them to miss out on a cultural experience that they could have, just like we don't want to miss out. And it's easier for us to mentally get over some things that the kids wouldn't mentally get over, but they're looking to us whether they admit it or not. So being flexible when things change, being flexible on how you usually do things and changing um, to things look different when life's on the road or when you're flying to a different culture and just be flexible and be okay when things are different or don't look the way that you think they should. When you travel, one of the beautiful things is that you get to see new places, you get to experience new cultures, you get to see the world outside of your home region. And so there's always things that people uh, believe differently, people act differently, people cross the street differently, they drive differently, they eat differently. There's the cultures around the world and even in the US, things are different. And so that's one thing that is a huge piece of our travel with the kids is allowing them to see that. And that's one thing that I love about traveling is that we get to see those cultures and see the people around the world and experience those differences. And so flexibility is key. And if you can be flexible, go in with a flexible plan. Um, I think you'll have a much more enjoyable trip and you'll get a lot more out of it than you would if you had a detailed, detailed itinerary that was nailed down to the minute that you didn't have any time for flexibility. And if something went wrong, then your whole itinerary is off. Because it will. So be flexible and you'll have a much better experience. So we've had the opportunity to go around the world. I've been to 30 countries, I've been to all 50 states. Uh, Megan's been to 49 states and I think about 20 countries. The kids have been all around the world. And so we want to share our experience with others. We know that there's, there's nothing special about us. We have just taken the opportunity that we've been given and God has allowed us to see the world with our family. Um, so many times, We've had opportunities to work with mission organizations. We've had opportunities to just travel for fun. So we want to share these experiences. If there's anything in particular that you have questions about or specific things, we'll try to go into more detail with some future videos with some specific tips or specific things that you can do to make the family travel more enjoyable or ideas of places to go and things that we've done. You can check out some of the vlogs that we've posted about some of the destinations that we've been to see about some of those places. Traveling with your family is 100% doable. It's just something that you've got to make your mind up and go for it and start planning today.